Hey guys, it's May May, and in Tuesday's video, we started assembling this box. This is going to be a graduation hat explosion box. You've probably seen these on the internet. I was inspired to do this by one that I saw Melody get, and also my um, assistant that works with me, Amanda, wanted one of these, and she showed me a picture. So I'm just kind of doing my own thing and just playing around. So if you want to see how we assembled it to this point, You'll want to check out the video I loaded on Tuesday, which I will link here on the screen, and I'll put the description in the bottom. This is the beginnings of the explosion box and the top. We did this all together in that first video, and today we're going to make the mortarboard section and the tassel, and we may even do more depending on how time goes. This is at least going to be a three-part series. The first thing I need to do is fix this box because... I used white core paper, and let me bring this up where you can see it. You see the white core showing? I don't like that. It cracked because of how I had to make this paper. Watch the first video and it'll make perfect sense. I'm gonna take my VersaFine ink, and I'm just gonna run it around that edge, like so. Really probably don't have to do it up here because this is gonna be covered by that mortar board, but I wanted to do it before I started to put everything together just in case it showed. I don't want that white to stick out. So now I've just colored it in black and you really can't see it. And as that ink keeps drying, you really won't be able to see it. Now I'm going to do that on all the edges. So let me take this off of here. And I'm going to run it around these edges as well. Because like I said, I kind of made this into double-sided paper. And so there is some of the color showing. Also, if you can't get every little bit with your ink pad, you can do this with a marker. You can do this with an uh, ink blending tool, whatever you've got. I've got some spaces there I can't get. Let me get a marker here. I have a Sharpie handy. So I'm just gonna come right here and just these parts that I can't get the ink pad into, just hit those real quick and make that a little darker. So there we go, it's a lot better now. It looks a lot more black than it did and I got all the edges covered. Some places may not be perfect, but we're gonna keep moving forward. Now okay. what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pay, take a piece of chipboard. This is six by six chipboard. It's not super heavy weight, but this is something I keep from some packaging that we get around the office. But I wanna show you something. If you're wondering about chipboard, my friend Christopher sent me some beautiful um, surface board is what this is called. And he, it comes in 10 sheets. He's got my notes for me here. It comes in 10 sheets. It retails for $6.99. And you can get this on his website at brutusmanure.com. I'll put a link below. It's embossable, die cuttable, you name it. This one is not big enough for what I'm doing today, but if you are making one and you're looking for one, maybe you're making a smaller version, this is some good chipboard. And it's not extremely, extremely heavy. Let me show you. It's kind of like this, but it's, it's heavier than what I'm using today. But um, I wanted to show you that just in case you were looking for something cool, especially for card making. All right, six by six chipboard, six by six black square of cardstock, and another one. And I'm going to sandwich these together. But you can probably guess what I'm going to do first. Before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and ink up the edge of this chipboard. I used to have some black chipboard, and it looks like I've used it all because I couldn't find it. So here's what I'm going to do. Just run this around. A little bit on the top, too, just in case I get off. And to me, this is just a lot easier than trying to do this after the fact. My hands are going to be totally inky, but that's okay. Look at this hand full of ink. No big deal. Okay, I'm going to use that same sheet adhesive I've been using, this good stuff, and I'm going to cut a piece down to six by six and make it work just for that piece. And this cuts really well in your trimmer. I'll show you. So I'm going to put this guy here, place this guy inside, and cut me a six by six piece. That one, see, all this is usable 100%. No, no waste. I'll use that for something else and cut this down to six. And there we go, it cuts super easy. Doesn't leave any gumminess on your um, cutter or anything like that. I know that would be a concern, but it doesn't, it's really good. All right, and now I'm gonna release this backer section. And this time I'm just gonna peel it all the way off, like so. And then I'll place that chipboard. I think I'll take the sticky to the chipboard. Let's do this. So I'm just gonna place this on this edge. Again, if it's not perfect, I can trim it away after we get it down. But this should be fine. Just work this out so none of this will buckle. I really like to do this step when I'm giving a gift like this because this is something you that I'm sure the recipient will wanna keep for a long time to come. And so I really like to take the time to use this kind of thing instead of using like a, a glue or a Mod Podge because as you know, that can warp or you know, wiggle around, and I don't really want to do that. So, trimming off any that is hanging off the edge. I'm going to do that now, just to save me time in a minute. Now then, I can stick one piece down. Just 
just like that. Flip it over and do the same over here. So now I've got the box and I've got my covered piece of chipboard and this is gonna go on top of the box just like this. I'm going to adhere it upside down so I can look and make sure I'm all the way around like I should be. But if you need to measure, you can just measure this an inch in on either side. I'm not gonna stress about that too much. I am gonna leave the box together for this so it can kind of weight it down and sit it down on the top for me really well. And just get this adhered. Now you do want to make sure you adhere this well. You could use sticky tape here. You don't have to use wet glue. But the reason I want to make sure you're going to adhere it well is because this is going to get some lifting and tugging. People will be pulling this on and off of the box. So you want to make sure whatever adhesive you use here is nice and sturdy. I'm just kind of checking it all the way around, seeing how that looks before that glue dries. And that looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to let it go like that and let that dry. So I'm fixing to make a tassel out of some baker's twine. I've created this little piece that's four inches long and about an inch and a half wide. And I put some holes in the top up here. You'll see what that's for in just a few minutes. This is made from that surface board I showed you. Now what I'm going to do is I want to make kind of a realistic looking tassel. So I'm going to wrap this a lot of times around. I want a nice thick tassel. I don't want it to be sloppy, so I'm trying not to bend my chipboard or anything. I just want to wrap this until it gets thick enough. One thing to remember is, just because I'm seeing this thickness here, remember I have this thickness on the back as well. So we're going to be making double what we're looking at on the front. So I'm going to wrap and wrap and wrap this until I think it's enough. And I'm thinking that's getting to be enough. Any more might be too much, but I'm going to go two more times just to be sure. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is wrap this around like this, and I'm gonna put another piece of tape back here just to hold it while we are working with the top part. Gonna stick that down. You can prep that tape ahead of time. You'll be happier. I should have, but I didn't. I'm gonna cut this piece right at the edge, just like so. Now, these holes at the top that I created, this is so I can get in here under this tassel. So I'm just gonna take my pokey tool and lift this up and run this baker's twine underneath, okay? and then feed it through the top. All the way to the top of this little wrapped part we've got. And I wanna make sure I give myself enough to tie that off in a few minutes. This'll be the part that attaches our tassel to the top of the box, okay? So I'm just gonna leave that like that. Matter of fact, I think I'll go ahead and just tie it on to the top and get it to stay permanently in that top spot there. Just tie a little knot. Now again, that's the top of the tassel that's gonna hold it to the hat. But I need to do something here to secure this like a tassel. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut myself a good long piece of baker's twine. I'm never shy with baker's twine. I probably waste a lot, but I love to make sure I have enough. And I'm gonna start feeding this through this little hole I cut out in the middle of this template I made, or what is this? Uh, this tool, I guess, this tassel tool. <laughs> Just gonna feed this through over and over. I'm gonna wrap it in and out. Now this is a good place to use a dental threader or a needle threader or something if you've got it. I'm gonna see if I can do this without having to pull one out. We'll see, it's not too bad. The bigger the hole you make on either side of your tassel spot, the better too, because you can get this in and out easier, faster, quicker. So I think that's enough. So now I'm gonna tie this in a knot and I want it to be snug. So I'm just going to wrap these pieces like so. Pull that nice and tight. And wrap it again, pull it nice and tight. It's kind of going to just blend in this little knot we're making. And I'm going to do one more to be safe because I don't want that to come undone. Good deal. Now I'm going to snip that away close to the knot. Now before I remove this, I'm gonna take some of my art glitter glue and I'm just gonna put a bead on here. And I'm just gonna let this sit for a few minutes and dry. You can take it and kind of tap it down with your finger and kind of uh, get that really on there really well. And that'll keep that snug together so it won't come loose. Just let that dry for a second before we take it off. For the top of the box, I found this button in my stash that I thought looked really cool because it doesn't have any holes in the top. And it has this little um, piece for the thread to go through, which is going to be perfect for what I want to do. I'm going to glue dot this to the top of my box. So I'm going to take one of my glue dots and I'm going to center it on the top 
That's pretty centered. I think I'm gonna put two dots there because these are the small dots. You can use a big, large one. You could use hot glue. You don't even have to use this particular dot. And then I'm just gonna put my button right on top of that glue dot. I'm gonna press it in real well because I want that dot to hold. But look how cute that is. It looks just like a mortarboard top, right? And it has a place for us to tie our tassel on. Now I'm not gonna cut this length just yet. I don't know how much I'm gonna need to tie it to the box, so I don't wanna cut that just yet. I am gonna go ahead and cut this off of my little piece that I made by sticking my scissors under all of the twine, pulling them to the very end and snipping like you're making a haircut. See how we did that? Just snip that at the end. Now I'm making a little slice in this side of the chipboard and I'm just gonna slide this off and out. Now, pulling this away. This is still completely reusable, okay? You can still use it and now you know where you need to be with that little slice. So you still use it and you can just slide your piece off. So the sturdier your chipboard or whatever you use for that, the more you can use it in the future. Okay, so I got my tassel released. Look how cute it is. It looks like an actual tassel from a graduation hat. Now, I'm gonna bring the box back over. I want this guy to hang just off the edge of my box, just like that, okay? So if you make it and it's too long, don't worry, because you can trim it, but I think this one's gonna be just right. So I'm gonna wrap this around that piece that I did, and then I'm gonna tie it here and cut the excess away. This is another reason I like to give myself lots of extra so I don't have to fight with it when I'm wanting to tie anything on or anything like that. So there's that, and now I can just trim away the excess. Just like so, that is so cute. Look at that little tassel, how precious, right? I may end up going back and hot gluing this on just to be safe. I know I use a glue dot, but I still think that might need a little more security with this getting pulled or tugged on. So we may go back and hot glue it, but for now, look how stinking cute that is. I love it, I love it, I love it. Okay. Let's go back to the inside of the box. Now I'm making the flaps to go inside the pockets we made on the side. This is my tab punch board, and I'm just gonna make this super easy. Here's what I'm gonna do. These pieces are three and a half by three and a half inch. That's what I'm using for inside those flaps. I'm gonna line this paper with this edge. I'm not gonna worry about these measurements because I want this to be in the middle of this guy. I don't really care how wide the tab is. So I'm just gonna line this page up with the edge, just like this, and punch. Pull this guy out. I'm going to flip it around. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to line up this guy right here with the edge and punch. And that's going to get me that tab in the middle when I cut these guys away. So I'm going to do that to all of these real quick. Lining up on this edge. You can do this based on your instructions and measure it and all that good stuff. But I'm just not worried about it because that's going to make it centered by measuring those sides. I'm just going to do it just like this. Now at the top here, we need to cut these extra pieces off. So I'm just going to Slide this guy under just like so. I'm gonna take my blade, gonna place it into the little groove here and cut those extra bits away. You just put it beside the tab. So now I've got this tab at the top that can pull out from those little pieces we made. I'm gonna do that to all of these real quick. Now I'm gonna take this end, these little uh, pointy ends, I'm gonna put it in right to this line that says corner rounder. I'm gonna punch that and it'll just give me a slight round on that little corner. I mean, it's really slight, but it's kind of nice because then it kind of looks like a Rolodex card. That's how slight that little rounder is. So I'm gonna do that on all of these. Now we'll do some stamping and stuff on these later. That'll probably be in Saturday's video, but look how cute these are. Now we can just slide them in and we'll be able to stamp on top of those and they'll be so cute in our little pockets. So I thought these are really cute to add some color. These are just some, this was a 12 by 12 sheet that I cut down. This is from the Echo Park, the story of our family paper. I think this will be super cute right here just to add a pop of color and to pull all of this together. I just think that's really cute. Um, it has kind of the navy blue and it's got the orange in it, so it's cute. Now I'm gonna round the edges of these because I wanna kind of stick to that theme. And I'm gonna round this with my quarter inch side and I think I can do them all at one time. Let's just see. Yep, got all those rounded and ready to go. So they'll just get glued directly in like so. I decided this was kind of getting in my way. So I'm gonna close this up and I got a really loose rubber band to put around it because I don't want to bend it. I just want it to hold it in place out of my way. So I'm just gonna let that do that for now while I keep working. That's a lot easier. It's like putting on a hairband when your bangs keep falling down. <laughs> You guys know what I'm talking about when you're cleaning house and your hair keeps falling in your face. It's just like that. 
You could even add pockets to this section. You've got plenty of room because the way we stack this, we've stacked it an inch apart from each other. So there's plenty of room to put some dimension inside of here. And we'll probably add that kind of stuff as we go. But for now, this is working and that added some color. It just looks much more cheery. Now from the black hat, when it pops open, there's some party colors there. Now I'm just gonna mat these sections front and back with pretty colorful paper. I'm not gonna add photo mats. This is not for me. This is for someone else's daughter. And I know she's gonna wanna add photos, but I'm gonna mat everything for photos. And but for this section, I'm just gonna mat all of these guys. So this is almost three inches. I'm gonna cut the mats here at two and three quarters by two and three quarters to go on top of this. Now here's something I wanna caution you of. We're gonna have to do our corner rounding to match where we're at. So like when I cut this particular mat, I'm gonna corner round the two top corners, but not the bottom, okay? But on this piece here, I'll need to corner around three sides and not that one. That'll make sense in a second. Let me go cut all the mats. I'm gonna be using this teacher's pet set. I think this is really cute and it's gonna work great in here. So I'm gonna be using this for a lot of our embellishments. So I've got my eight pieces of paper here. Now I'm going to mat these individually because I want to pay attention to where my patterns are going. So like this little school bus is cute, but I might want it facing in a certain direction or a certain angle. And on the back, you can see these, these are so cute. This is very precious. But I'm going to put this one like right here. Now the reason I need to pay attention is I need to corner around one, two, three corners, but not this one. So you're going to have to pay attention to each one of these you mat. So I'm going to corner around this one at half, half an inch, half an inch. So I got those corners done and now this is gonna fit in here perfectly. See how that's gonna fit just right? That's what we're looking for. So I'm gonna glue this guy down. Because I use this paper here, I think I'm gonna take this paper and flip it over and go to this corner. So that way I don't end up with the same pages everywhere. And this one's cute, it can be anyway because of the numbers, but I need to corner around the same corners. So three corners, do a little dry run, make sure it'll fit, and it will, that's perfect. Just pay attention to each one individually so you'll know you're getting your papers in the right orientation exactly where you want them. So I've got these outer ones done like so. I think I may mat these in a solid color um, because this would be a cute place to maybe put stickers and embellishments and put photos here. So I think I'm gonna skip these. Even though I cut this, I can use these in another spot. I think I'm going to, on the back side, mat these pieces and leave this for solid. So they'll be opposite of each other, if that makes sense. So this will be a photo spot, photo spot, photo spot, photo spot. And then on the, in, the other layer, I'll have photo spot and paper here. So it'll be just the opposite. So let's see, I'm gonna hold this up. Be hard for you guys to see, I'm gonna hold this and make sure I have it in the right orientation. And this needs to be rounded here and here. And then I can add my glue and put it on. Because everything in this album is pretty symmetrical, you really could do that. You could just go, well, if I put this piece here, I'm gonna put a different piece in another spot and it'll kind of make everything make sense. Okay. These two are matted and when you close it up, these are matted. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So when I close this and I turn it where you can see it, the outsides are not, the insides are. Now what I'm gonna do, and I'm not gonna do it today in this video because I wanna stamp them, is I'm gonna do these with white photo mats that I stamp with place photo here. So we'll do that for Saturday's video because we'll try to do a lot of stamping at one time for stamping Saturday. Now I'm gonna head to here and start matting. Now this one's gonna be different, okay? These guys are gonna be easy to mat, just like we just did. But these guys we're gonna to have to do a little different. So I'm gonna show you how to do these. So the first thing I wanna do is measure the square. This square is right at two and a half inches. So I need a two and one quarter by two and one quarter inch square for all of these pieces that I'm gonna mat. I think I'm gonna do the same thing I just did in that I'm gonna do every other one matted. These guys I think I'm gonna mat because they're kind of in an odd space. So these will be for photos, okay? These I'll mat and I'll do the same thing here because of the odd shape. It'll be better just to have paper there. Let me show you what to do with these. So now it's time for matting. And these corners, which are really awkward, I wanna show what we're gonna do. Let's say we wanna put these backpacks right here. I think this is cute and we won't even use both. We'll do one side in backpacks and one side in something else. Here's what you'll do. You're gonna take your paper trimmer gonna sit it down on top of here, which won't hurt anything to show you this. And I'm gonna line up one corner of the paper in my cutting guide and one corner in the other. And I'm gonna lay this down and I'm gonna slice this 
in half, okay? Got that sliced in half. Now this may seem weird, but I'm putting them back together in my hand and I'm going to corner round them. This is not hard to do and you can get this done just by holding them in your hand like this and corner rounding. And I need to corner round all four corners. Now the reason I didn't do it before I cut it in half is because it's harder to line the center up without the point of the paper. Now you could, I'll show you another way to do that if this is just too much for you, if it's kind of losing you. Now see that piece can go right there. And if I want to flip this guy over and use the back side, it can go right there so I can have a little more color in that corner, okay? Let me show you another way to do it. So let's say I want to map this corner and I want to go ahead and round the corners because I don't want to have to hold it when I get done. So if you just go ahead and round all four of your corners, then you can just take this piece and fold it in half, lining up this little corner with the other little corner, okay? Crease that down. I'm gonna bone fold it so I'll get a nice sharp crease. Don't worry about what it looks like just yet. Open this back up and now we can slice that on our trimmer or with our scissors. I'm bring my trimmer over. Now see I have that line as my guide. Lay that into place, slice. Then I got my two pieces all ready to go. And once you've got several ready, we can start putting those in. So we're gonna put some glue on the back. Now these are great places for embellishments. It might be hard to get photos in this section. However, if you have any Instagram photos or anything that are kind of cute little small shapes, you could put those in there. But this is a great place for little embellishments. And I like using the kind of, you know, messy paper. I think it looks cute to have kind of a messy look. So I have the inside of the corners matted. I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing for these sides. And then we'll work on the photo mats. So here's where we're at. We have our tassel done and hanging on the side. Look how cute it is like that, uh, adorable. Then when we open it up, our explosion box happens and I already did the matting of these corners. So that's what I was working on when we just finished so, um, doing those little corners. Now these will probably just get embellishments and things like that because they are in a spot where they don't really um, get a photo. They could, but next we're gonna go to stamping and putting in these matte photos. So I'm gonna stop this video here because that can give you time to get caught up to all your matting and all the things you're doing like that. And then we'll start adding some embellishments. So come around for Saturday, the stamping Saturday video, and that's where we're gonna to do some embellishments together. You just have to use all your hands, <laughs> you guys remember that from our live video, to grab all this together and put the lid on it and then you're fine. But isn't it adorable? Okay, so see you Saturday as we finish this guy. Thanks so much for watching. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.